So um, my name is Mike Park. I'm a developer on the geoanalytics tools. And um, how many of you saw the plenary session, the geoanalytics, all that? OK, this is nothing like that, not nearly as cool. Um, so what we're going to talk about is how to use Apache Hadoop, uh, specifically Spark SQL, Hive, things like that. Up? Up? OK. I don't actually know how to do that. I'll just move it up. How's that? Better? Cool. I figures I would be the first one in the first session of everything. So um, how many of you have actually used Hadoop? A good amount. How many of you have heard of it? A lot. OK. Um, those of you who used it, how many of you tried to do it on one laptop that's completely underpowered? None of you? OK. This is about what you can expect. Um, this happened to be about 20 minutes ago. As you can imagine, I was a bit panicked, but everything seemed to have gone OK. So what I'm going to do in this demo, wow, it is all over the place. What I'll do in this demo is uh, I have Uber data. And this is about 4.5 million points. And what I'd like to do is do some aggregation on that and visualize it in ArcMap and then ArcPro. That's basically the flow of this demo. Um, how many of you have used sort of a notebook, IPython notebook style interface? A few of you? OK, so we're going to use that. And uh, I'll walk you through it. So this is our, this is our Uber data. Jeez. There we go. And uh, it's a CSV. You can see it has a timestamp. It has latitude and longitude. OK, that's all good. It's about 2 gigabytes, give or take. It's not big data, but it's apparently too big for this laptop. And it's about 4.5 million records. So more than you could do in ArcMap or Pro, usually. This is what it looks like if you render it on the map. It's a bit chaotic. You can't really see any patterns. Although I did notice a couple things in this. Uh, one is Uber's new top secret method of transportation. I'd take one of those. Probably cost extra. This is what we want to get to. So we started off with amphibious cars, um, and we ended up with a pretty cool little map with some 3D extrusion. You know, Everyone loves 3D. So the way this works is uh, I'm going to be running SQL statements. How many of you are familiar with SQL? Pretty much everyone. So we have a couple of functions that we provide in our GIS tools for Hadoop that let you do this spatial binning and aggregation. Um, the first one is this ST bin. And the way this works is, given a point, tell me what bin it, it lies within. And that's just an integer ID. That's, um, it's just a big, long number. And it doesn't really matter what it is. You don't care. The only thing you care about is that given a bunch of points that are in the same bin, you can group by that bin ID and then do the aggregations on that bin ID. And then the next thing is, you need to be able to generate the polygon for that bin. And so this ST, bin em or this ST envelope will create the polygon for that bin so that you can then bring it back into ArcMap and render it. And enough slides. We'll just get right into it. Whoops. We will get right into it. So what I have here is Ambari. Ambari is an open source cluster manager. This is actually running in Docker on this laptop. I have it given about 10 gigabytes and four cores. And so all of this is going to be running within a virtual machine within this laptop. So it's still pretty quick, but you can get much faster performance if you dedicate hardware. So the first thing we do is we want to upload a table. This is just this two gig, two, that's not the right one. That is the right one. Oh, it was only 200 megabytes. I lied to you guys. It was not 2 gigabytes. It was 200 megabytes. So we chose that file. And what's going to happen, it'll bring it in. And it'll give you sort of an interactive way to 
actually apply schema on top of that Uber data. And so we know that we have a header row, so we want to set that. And we know that these two fields are doubles. And so what would happen if I hit upload table? It would upload it and create a table in our Hive Metastore that points to the Uber data. And then we can run SQL commands on that Uber data. So we could upload it, but we're not going to do that because it's already there. So this is a Zeppelin notebook. Um, if you watched the plenary, you probably saw the notebooks that they were doing with the ArcGIS scripting. Um, this is somewhat similar, different notebook. There's no maps or anything on it. It's just a plain um, notebook. But it has binding to languages such as Spark, um, Spark SQL. You can run Direct Scala. You can run Python. You can do all kinds of things all within this same notebook. So there's a lot of power here. Um, and if you connect this to your Spark cluster or your Hadoop cluster, there's, you can do a lot of things with it. Um, so the first thing we have to do is we have to import these functions. So we have to say create temporary function. We import these uh, functions that we created with the GIS tools for Hadoop. And then we'll be able to use these in the rest of the operations. So the first thing is, I don't know how well you guys can see that. Should I, should I increase the size a little bit? Too much. So the first thing we can do is select the count from Uber. This is going to do a full scan over the data, everything. And that took, what did that take? Oh no, we're not selecting the count. We're just selecting a couple of features out of it. But you can see that now we have a table, right? We said select everything from Uber, but only return the top eight rows. OK. So we have all of this data in here. We can see we have latitude and longitude, and we have the date time. We have all the information we need to do this aggregation. If we select the count of all the records in there, you'll see we have 4.5 million records. So decent amount. And that came back quick. Like that scanned over the entire data set and counted all the, all the lines in the data set. Um, so what I have here is a query I created that will actually do the spatial binning, but it won't save it anywhere. It'll just return it as uh, a data frame here in, in the notebook. Um, so the, the first thing you can see here is we're going to select ST bin. Point 0.1 is our cell size. So our cell size is actually point 0.1 degrees because that's what the coordinate system it's in. If you had it in a different coordinate system, it would be in those units. Um, we have ST point, which creates the actual point from the lat long, something we can work with. And so once you run that, you get the all of the rows in the Uber data with each one augmented with that bin ID. And so we can use that bin ID in the group by part of that select statement, which then groups and does a aggregate count of all the points that were in that bin. So we can run that. It said error, but I have a feeling it'll work this time. So this is scanning again over the entire CSV doing the grouping, aggregating, generating those polygons, all within, how long did that take? Nine seconds? So we just went over 4.5 million just like that. So you can see the power of this. It's, it's not the most simple interface because you're running within a notebook, but it's extremely powerful. And if you're a data scientist, this is actually usually the type of interface that you'd want to work with. This is very interactive, exploratory work for doing this spatial aggregation and and things like that. Um, we also provide a whole bunch of other ST operators, spatial type operators. We have um, topological operators, contains within. We have buffer, all kinds of things that you can run within here. But this demo specifically is for aggregation. And I had some other things. So the next thing we need to do is create a table. I believe I have already created this. So when I run it, it should fail. Yeah, table already exists. So this table, the key to this table is that the, for any of you familiar with Hadoop, the input format is this unenclosed JSON input format. That's a self-describing input. For, it's, 
It's a lot like what you get from a feature service when you query by REST. That's the type of format you're getting here. It, but instead of being fully enclosed, each line is a record. Um, you couldn't read the entire thing as a JSON document because it's not valid, but each line is a valid JSON document. And so that's good for big data because you can append to it without having to recreate <clears throat> the entire thing. So we have that table already. So the next step, <clears throat> sorry, I'm getting over a cold. The next step is we actually want to do that binning and then save it off to the table. Um, we'll choose a smaller cell size. 0 0.001 was rather large. So this is doing that same assigning the bins, grouping by the bins, counting all the features within that bin. Um, I'm only doing count, but if you had other numeric attributes, you could do things such as average, sum, standard deviation of all the fields within there. And then you would, for each bin, you would get all of those statistics. And you can then bring that into ArcMap or Pro and visualize. So 20 seconds, we did all of that. We saved it off to a JSON document. That JSON document is now living in HDFS. It's referenced by Hive, but it's living in our Hadoop file system. Um, so now, the next step of this is we can actually go into ArcMap. And we have the geoprocessing tools, which is another component to the GIS tools for Hadoop. These are Python scripts that will connect to HDFS. They will download your data, and they will convert it into features and then put it on the map. I have a model here. Step one is copy from HDFS. Okay, Take that JSON document, bring it back down locally to this temp.json. Step two is then convert it into features. And that just converts it and saves it as a feature class in your default GDB. So we'll run that. You can see the HDFS remote file. It turns out that Hive always saves their, their default warehouses in this path, apps Hive warehouse. This table name is actually the same name that we used when we created the table. So it's that Uber bins ag. That's the table we created. That's the file it creates on disk. Pretty simple. You just need to know where it's saving it off. So it turns out this is the slowest part of the entire process, downloading it and uh, getting everything set up. Um, And so all, and part of the problem is all of this is running on that one laptop. So it's a little bit overloaded, hence the message I got earlier. Um, but still, 25 seconds, not that bad. So these are the bins. No symbolization set yet. My base map has taken a bit of time to render. So we can symbolize on the count. And now you see basically what you would expect, a lot of Uber drop-offs in Manhattan. So these GP tools only run in ArcMap because they were built for Python 2.7. ArcGIS Pro uses Python 3.0. And so um, that's why we're using ArcMap right now. So the next step is we actually bring this into Pro. If I run them both at the same time, it's chaos. So I happen to be connected to that same default GDB. I did run a aggregation earlier with a smaller cell size, and so that's higher resolution. So what we can do with this, obviously, we can symbolize it. Symbolize on count. Um, 
but the next step is to add a extrusion. So we extrude the features based on the count. There's a lot of features, so it still takes a bit of time to render. And there you go. Now you get a 3D visualization of what happened there. So, I mean, that's pretty cool, right? We took 4.5 million points, we aggregated them. I'm only 15 minutes into the demo and I don't really have anything else to talk about. Um, <laughs> it went way faster than I was expecting. But 4.5 million points, we aggregated them into bins using some simple SQL, brought it into ArcMap. A little clunky to have to go through ArcMap, but it's not that bad. Um, bring it into Pro and then do some awesome visualization on it. So that's really the key here. Um, when you're in GeoAnalytics, you can do things such as hexagon bins and things like that. But for this, you can do simple square bin aggregation really quick. Um, so what I can do now, because I ran out of things to do, is actually do earthquakes instead. So I have another notebook set up, import all of my points. Earthquakes, there's about 70,000. This is also not big data, but um, it still makes for some interesting visualizations. This one, again, has latitude, longitude. It also has depth and magnitude. So it's risky, but I can add that in here. We'll say, what is it? Some So there you go. Ran through all of that, summed up all the magnitudes in there. Maybe average would be better. And so now for each bin, you have the average magnitude. We could do the same for depth. Now it's important to note that this is all running on CSVs. This is not in a relational database. This is just raw text files. You can throw CSVs in, you can take them out, you can do all kinds of things with it. Um, there's no indexing, there's nothing. It's just brute force, crunch through the data, do these aggregations. Um, so we can do the same thing here. We'll create another table, bins ag. We'll do that same thing, run it through. creating a new table. And then close this, because if I open them both at the same time, bad things. How many of you have used Spark? Just two, three. Three people have used Spark. How are you liking it so far? Good? Pretty good? So we'll go and we'll run that same thing and we called the table bins ag, we'll say this is number two. This one might take a little longer because I probably generated more bins. So the download is all based on the number of bins you generate. It has nothing to do with the number of features you had in the original data set. Still pretty quick though. Not a lot of earthquakes there. So pretty much what you'd expect. You see the fault lines. We can go in there. We can symbolize on the count again.
and there you go. So you can connect, I'm running this all local, that's fine, but you can connect this to giant clusters, 100 plus machines, and it's really as simple as changing a quick setting in your interpreter bindings for your, uh, for your notebook. You can see here I have what we call the Spark Master. It's set to local and it's set to use all of the cores on my machine or all of the cores that Docker is giving it. But you can also point it at another cluster and you have to do no extra work. You just say go to this other cluster and do the same thing but bigger. I'm sorry? Yes, you do. Good point. So. His question was, do you also have to have the libraries installed to do the point and binning? And the answer is you do, and you can add those as dependencies to your notebook. So these, you can see we have the Esri Geometry API. This is just an open source Java geometry library. It has nothing to do with Spark or Big Data or anything. Um, and these extra two jars, Hive, these are actually Hive UDFs, but we're running them within Spark because there's an adapter. Um, Spark tends to have better performance than Hive in some cases. Uh, it just turns out that this interpreter is using Spark by default. And so you add these jars. You can get these from our uh, GIS tools from Hadoop GitHub repository. Bring them in, and now you don't have to do anything else. These will get distributed to your cluster. Um, you can point it at any number of clusters. You can point it at your GeoAnalytics cluster, whatever you want to do, it's fine. Um, and everything will just work in theory unless it crashes and uh, your laptop overheats. But other than that, you're fine. So um, it did run faster than I was expecting, which is a bit unfortunate. Are there questions? Yes. Sorry, what was that? Your options, so the question is, how do we streamline the process to not have to run the GP tools every single time we do something? And the answer would be, ideally, a plugin in Zeppelin that just puts it on the map right away. Um, they did have a project to put a plugin in Zeppelin, but the licensing didn't work out, so they weren't able to do it. Um, there are many, many tools for visualizing things in Zeppelin. And from what I hear, it's pretty easy to build plugins for it. So it may be just writing a little bit of code and um, making that work. So let me show you what I'm talking about a little bit. If we go back to the notebook, you can actually see right here all of these different visualization options. And so ideally, one of those would be a map. And I believe there is some work to do that. And if you if you watch the plenary, they have the map built into the Jupyter notebooks, which is not Zeppelin notebooks, um, which is kind of unfortunate, but it might be something worthwhile to look into. But there's plenty. You can even build, um, you can build a, what am I thinking of, a plug-in workspace for ArcMap or Pro that will connect directly to Hive, which is a bit ambitious, but it is doable. If you wanted the most streamlined way to do it, that's the way to do it. Other questions? All right, well, if you want to see any more demos or anything, drop by the GeoAnalytics booth. I'll be there all day. Um, yeah, so out a little bit early. Thanks, guys. <laughs>